Hello everyone, my name is Will Carmack. Uh, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and today I'm going to show you how to world build with an After Effects. I've been using the 3D camera a lot recently with my parallax animations and some green screen stuff coming out soon. I thought this was a perfect time to share with you something that's so fresh on my mind, which is building a 3D world in After Effects. If we look at my screen here, I'm going to use all these different pieces today to show you how to make this animation. This is more of a breakdown, less of a tutorial. I want to show you the process in which you can create a 3D scene and film a shot. Okay, so I have all of my files here in this folder of all the assets I want to create a world out of. I'm gonna select all these files and drag it into After Effects. And from here, let's drag them down into the timeline. And if you see, we have this giant conglomeration of every single set piece I've put in here. So we've got some uh, refining to do. To begin with, whenever I'm creating a 3D world, I'll actually just make every layer invisible. And I'll come up to composition, composition settings. And I'm gonna change this to a nice 1920 by 1080 comp. And so when you're using this effect in After Effects, it's technically like the 3D camera and using 3D space to animate. What you wanna do is hit Control A. So you've selected every layer and you'll see this little cube. If you click that box, you will now make all of your layers 3D layers. Very cool. Now let's come up to layer, new, and camera. Make sure it's 35 millimeters. Well, that's just my preference. Okay. And from here we can start having fun. Let me show you what changing these 3D things do. For example, if I turn on this little building, now I have this new position tool with this red, green, and blue slider arrow. Now I can move things up, down, and what's new is I can drag things forward and backwards. It's actually hard to tell. It actually looks like I'm scaling this item up and down. So to see how we're creating this 3D world in a more realistic way, we're gonna come down to this box here that says view and change it to two. And now this second composition right here is actually the top angle looking down on our scene. So you can look now, this blue arrow on the right composition that's hard to see is this clear blue arrow on the left because we're looking straight down. So you can see actually how we're moving it in 3D space because we're moving it further and closer away to the camera. So this is the camera right here. When you bring it closer, it gets closer to the camera. When you move it back, it gets farther away. So when you're world building with one of the After Effects cameras, it just replicates real spatial distance. And so that's where the world building aspect comes from. We now have to replicate spatial distance in real life. This building is gonna be in the background. There's gonna be things that are in the foreground and on the ground and in the air. So we have this building with this building in the center. And so now I can create the environmental features of a scene like the sky and the ground. That's what I always start with. So you can see in this top area that the sky is in the middle of the composition. But if we want this to be realistic, like actually spatially distanced, we'll grab this arrow that makes things come closer or further away from the camera. We just push that sucker way back. You can even push him past the bounds of like the black composition that you're seeing because from the actual active camera point of view, we can see what's going on. When we push something back in spatial distance like the sky, it's gonna look like it's been scaled down when really it's just further back. So to compensate for this uh, spatial distance, since it's far away, you have to just scale it up until it fills the sky that you're looking for. Bam. And if you click on the camera, you can actually play around already and see what that looks like. So you can see your camera view, your sky is now filled. It has filled the composition. This is a perfect place to start. The next part of world building that's super important to remember is just um, animating the ground in 3D space. It's not as simple as just getting a picture of the ground and putting it where you think it should be. For example, if I kept the ground facing straight like this, scaled it up, and I put it on the ground, 
like that, you would actually think firsthand that this looks really good. The ground looks like it's properly placed. But when you start animating the camera, since the ground is a 2D layer facing the camera, you're like gonna go right past it and it looks really weird. We want the ground to be perpendicular with the bottom of the camera. So what we can do is actually in the second composition where we're looking down, we can switch this view to left. So now instead of looking straight down at all of these clips, we're actually looking sideways at them. So if we actually grab this ground layer, which we can see in the active camera view, and from the side view, we can rotate it on the X axis. Oh, that's the building. We can rotate it on its X axis and actually see in the left viewer, we can see it get completely flat. So this is important, keep in mind, you wanna get your ground to 90 degrees because you want it flat against the ground. And now you can see in your active camera view, you can bring it down in Z space. And just because of how cameras work, they pick up the ground, even though it's completely flat, bam. Once you put it at the bottom of a frame, a camera can see something that's completely flat. And just like putting the sky in the background, when you put the ground at the bottom of the composition, you're gonna wanna scale it up. And we can switch back to the top view in this left composition. Move around the ground. And so now what we've done is created a really good foundation. We've created just the general scene, like the sky and the ground. With this, we can put in anything else. And before we start, we can create a fun beginning animation. So if you actually hit P on the camera layer, you can create a keyframe on position. You can go maybe six seconds down into your timeline. And if you look at the top viewer, you can see the position tool for the camera. You can just drag that forward. And then you can watch your first ever CGI generated scene. Because this is computer generated. This is a computer generated camera. These are computer generated models. So this is technically really low budget CGI. I think I could be wrong and I'm okay with being wrong by the way. Wow, this animation already looks pretty realistic. So this is basically the foundation of world building. You create just a general scene and from here we can make it way crazier. And we do it with the tools I just taught you to create this foundation. So I have dropped in a bunch of hazmat guys. It would be kind of funny if the hazmat dudes were in the foreground and the camera passed them. I'll bring them super close to the camera and then bring them up in space. The closer you can get any subject to the ground, you see how their feet are getting cut off? You want it to be just above their feet getting cut off, getting cut off, or else it'll, or else it'll look like they're floating. And so now with the guys right there, it, this is really fun for me because it's cool just the concept of I can recreate this and change the composition any way I want and get an entire scene. We can even spice it up a little more if we wanted to. I can put another hazmat guy and if we look at the top, which gives us a really good idea of spatial distance, I can put him back here, like really far back. And the reason I like to put things far back in the, in the distance is to create that overall depth. So if I have these green guys in the front, having some smaller green guys in the back helps sell how realistic and photorealistic this could be. And make sure they're always touching the ground layer. And when you put something back in space, you scale it down. And when you do that, sometimes you actually have to readjust. From there, maybe we can add a tower. Same deal, we can put this guy, scale this up really big actually. And I'll put this between the hazmat dudes and the ancient building. And so now when the camera goes forward, I feel like I'm creating an apocalyptic work environment and it's kind of cool. Another thing that's fun to remember is just the perception of depth in creating uh, spaces within these 3D scenes. So I just dropped in this wall and right now it's behind the hazmat guys. You can see in the top view that I just brought it in front of them. What's cool about bringing a wall into a 3D scene is it gives you an opportunity to create depth from the sides. What we haven't played with yet is the Y rotation. So if we set this wall to be a 3D layer and rotate it and rotate it in Y space, you can see we can now put this wall by the camera lens. Do you see how close the front of the wall is to the camera? So by creating this angle where the wall follows this red line on the side, if I rotate it to be completely straight, when the camera goes forward, it helps us with that dope. 
And bam, now we have a little wall on the left side of our camera, giving the scene even more depth. I think the background is lacking in a lot of imagery, so this gives us the opportunity to create some depth with mountains and clouds and whatnot. So I have this mountain layer here. I'm going to scale it up to be massive. And I'm going to push it to be close to the background layer, like the sky. Sometimes when you scale something up, you have to find it like this. Ooh, ooh, that looks really nice. I really like this. This is just a beautiful day at work for the hazmat crew. All right, all right, I'm vibing with this. Do you guys like this? I'm trying to think of some cool foreground elements, and so I dropped in some rubble and some wires. I put that really close to the camera, like really close. Bring it down a little bit. You can already see how cool this looks, can't you? What's cool is when you put things in the foreground, you create natural frames for yourself. And so as the camera goes through your uh, keyframes, it can go past the wire. Basically, after you learn the fundamentals of using the 3D position tool and understanding the spatial distance between people's feet touching the ground layer and the sky being behind everything, it's just understanding where everything needs to touch. And then once you get that concept, you can add anything you want. And if you wanted to do just anything crazier from here, you can just keep animating the camera. I always like to do it from this top composition because it's really easy to see where your camera's going. But I could have my camera come through them and get lower to the ground. And if you want your camera movements to be faster, you can just make that happen with the keyframes. Like all of these could be cutouts from a photo. So you can see how this world building technique can be applied to like parallaxes or even graphic animations like any of these could be a video and you can have a really well detailed scene of moving pieces I don't know if this made sense but this is how I world build <laughs> and it's one of my favorite After Effects tricks and some fine details that you could probably find on YouTube would just be like adding Gaussian blur or any kind of blur to subjects and things in the foreground and background to get depth and adding like smoke or dust particle videos to create some engaging movement. But I hope this made world building make more sense. It's a really cool effect I think more people should play with. And um, these speakers that aren't connected to anything were actually kind of expensive. So um, I have a sponsor. Squarespace. One amazing new feature about Squarespace is their Squarespace member areas. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members. Send email communications. Whoa and leverage your audience insights. <laughs> and then one of my personal favorites because it hits close to home is Squarespace portfolios. Everyone wants to be able to showcase their work to the world in a professional and sleek manner and Squarespace lets you do that. You can display projects in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share your private work with clients. That's next level website stuff. And I can't forget to mention the mailing list. You can gather people's emails through your website so you can create really powerful and meaningful email lists. Ultimately letting you be able to get the right message to the right people because you found your audience. So that's why I think Squarespace is incredible and why you should make a domain with them as well. So go to the top link in the description or squarespace.com slash Will Carmack to get 10% off your first website or domain. Thank you for sponsoring this video Squarespace and I hope everyone understands world building a little bit more in After Effects. It doesn't have to be so scary, you just kind of have to understand the 3D tools. And once you get that, you can create any scene in the world. And that's really exciting. All right, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day.